Hey guys, it's Drak, and I just got in this very interesting package from none other than Orange Modworks. Now, these are, or should be at least, dual OTAC Hammershot S1 kits. Now, the packaging on these is actually phenomenal. This is a really interesting little honeycomb pattern going on here. It's hexagonal, which is clever because this is the six-shot Hammershot kit. Now, there's been a lot of controversy about these kits. They took much longer to bring to market than they were supposed to, and then once they were brought to market, they ended up taking much longer to get to customers than they were supposed to. So, logistics aside, we are going to review the kits exclusively on their merits. They cost, I want to say, somewhere around $45 or a little bit more, and they should include a brand new hammer, a brand new trigger, an Orange Mod Works 8 kilogram hammer shot spring, as well as the brand new cylinder. So, this is a little happy modding contents guide which is cool also a cylinder axle which you'll have to insert coming in here we have all of these new parts we'll uh, crack this open really quick so there's that and we'll take a look at these so these are the traditional quality that you would expect from orange mod works and their parts i've already done some stuff with the orange mod works hammer shot spring so we'll set that aside in order this is the cylinder piece nothing phenomenal or special here to speak about the trigger is an interesting new material it's almost grippy in a way i'm not sure how well that's going to move inside the shell but we'll find out very shortly if that's more comfortable than the stock spring or the stock trigger rather or not it's got the orange mod works logo on it here we have a very grippy hammer lots more texture here than the original this seems to be an almost rubbery piece it's got a little bit of flex to it not a lot where it counts here a little bit of bend but not too terribly much and so that'll be interesting again orange mod works logo there those pieces are black now inside our rather handsome packaging here we have the cylinder itself so getting that out will come through this way and that cylinder is is again a very a very handsome piece a little bit of like glue and splash on here but the gray on black looks very very cool much smaller aperture here in the back which means that it'll have the um, air restrictor constantly open on a stock hammer shot so parts look pretty good the issues that people have been having have been pertaining to fit so in order to get a pretty reasonable sampling I have two kits here for two identical hammer shots and no hammer shots have seen more battle than these these are well deserving of an upgrade at this point these are my owl hammer shots the tape has been lost on one this one still has its owl buck tape and we are going to come in and complete completely overhaul these with the OTAC kits. They've seen HVZ battle in almost like double digit states at this point so they are ready to get an upgrade and that should be a lot of fun. So going to come in, do these, we'll crack them open and see how the kits fit in and we'll also do a quick comparison to the stock parts while we're inside. Well the tape is gone. Good night sweet prince. So as you can see here, replacing the hammer should not be too terribly complicated. I have already tapped off this post. I'm coming in with my screwdriver. I'm using carpet because the pin will, or the post or the peg or whatever you want to call it, I call it a pin, P-I-N, will tap out into the carpet and you won't damage the ABS plastic for your spring receiver down here. So like I said, that just tapped right out. There's one end which is ground in such a way that it, it has a high friction constant so it holds things in place. And so I tap in that direction so that it never has to go through the plastic. So now we'll just start reassembling this hammer here. You can see that this is the piece. We'll come right back in from that angle. Again, this is beveled out so that it's a receiver for that piece and I always hate how silly I look doing this on camera because the goggles that I'm wearing right now are kind of messing with my depth perception, but that's okay. Come in with a pair of pliers that are adjustable and just pinch that into the plastic. There we go. Slipped into place very nicely. This is, of course, the Orange Mod Works spring as compared to the stock spring, which is a little bit worn now that it's been in the owl hammer shots for so long. Flared end goes at the bottom, so that slides into place like so. Then this is going to slip up and in here. 
just like that. I find that this one's easier to not fool with tapping off because it's got a little bit more give to it. Ratchet this down one, kind of pull it back on, and there that is. So that is a very solid system at this point. That goes here, and now we're going to replace the trigger. So the trigger comes off. This is, of course, the stock trigger as compared to the Orange Modworks trigger. Almost identical with the exception of this being made of the slightly more grippy rubberized plastic. Just like we did with the Blaster Parts UK trigger, we're going to come in, tease that into place. Didn't have to move the torsion spring at all. Excellent. So that is exactly where we want it to be. This pin locks in here. This hole does nothing. And... Boom. The OTAC kit does not come with grease, which is very surprising to me that there was no grease in this kit. So you get the stickers and you get all of the referent pieces, or relevant pieces rather, but no grease. So I'd come in and add a little bit of white lithium grease. I will definitely be doing that between installing, but just as a reference here, we can see that priming the blaster, much heavier prime now clicks into place definitely needs this panel back so this is the bracket that fits on like so and shoot locks in here here and then the triggers post comes through right there so I'll get this locked into place and then we'll set it back in and then we'll start dealing with the real beast here which is the six shot cylinder and that should be pretty interesting Alright guys, so in the spirit of complete honesty and disclosure, which is what I would want from a Nerf review channel and what I hope you've come to expect from mine, I want to tell you about the first issue that I've run into with this kit. So while putting it back together, I noticed that it wasn't priming. Now there's a reason for that and I've deciphered and decoded it and I want to explain it. So most people who got early kits like I have, have noticed issues with their cylinder not revolving and my cylinder actually revolves great. It fit smoothly, comfortably, and is working A-OK, -okay, firing on all cylinders. You can see that when I prime here without the spring in, we have no issues. So priming back, lining this up just there, and we have a complete alignment here, which is excellent, and then it's caught, so pretending that there's some upward tension here, pull the trigger, and pow, fire. So again, doing that is just lining this up, priming back, perfect rotation, and firing. Now the issue is that when I come in and add Orange Mod Works super beefy 8 kilogram spring here, the tension from the spring is interacting with that soft new material on their hammer in such a way that it no longer primes. And I'll show you why in just a second. So let's get this seated. Hate that I have to do this. There we go, so perfect. So now that it's seated, you can see that as I prime through, this is a regular grip and a regular prime, priming through. The warp here is pressing down on this, so it goes from this width to a little bit tighter, and that little bit of tightness is such that it's no longer getting past this screw post, so I get stuck here. And it takes both of my hands and all of my strength, and I still feel like I'm breaking the kit here, and it's not happening. So if I really force the issue, insert some, here, let's grab a longer screwdriver, insert some serious leverage, a thinner longer screwdriver, and really get it down there. We do get it to catch, and it's, again, perfectly functional. I'll grab a dart real quick, load it into the cylinder, and fire. So, perfect shot, very excellent, but then going to prime again, stuck. And so, that's really disappointing. I'm going to try and find a workaround. I am, of course, a modder first and a reviewer second, so I'm going to try shaving down this post here just a hair and see if that gets us around this hang time here. But that's pretty unacceptable for a kit that costs as much as this kit costs. So I'm going to get that fixed. I'll see if I have the same problem in kit number two, which is why I'm glad that I have two of them, and we'll keep rocking and rolling. So with Talon up and running and, in all honesty, functioning flawlessly now that we've come in and shaved that post down, 
I have started working on Beak and I decided that this was an excellent opportunity to show you the differences between these hammers so you can see that this comes down further. It's almost an identical copy of this, although this extends forward further and then there's an entirely additional piece down here for those with smaller hands or weaker thumbs to grip onto and pull. And I think that that's a really interesting feature. I think that it's very nice for users who wanted that feature and in all honesty it's quite comfortable so I'm going to get installing this kit and I'll let you know if there are any hiccups here. So I want to point out that in the second kit I'm getting the same exact issue here with this screw well interacting with a trigger or a priming hammer that bends too much and I am in fact getting perfect barrel rotation so the cylinder here is doing exactly what it's supposed to but each time we're hanging up right here I can drive it through sheer force to about here but at this point the tightness is too much and as we get into that well it's just not working again if I take a longer screwdriver come in and prime directly through absolutely no issues and find a dart so we don't have to dry fire you can't not dry fire the air restrictor is always open in these kits so firing is a smooth crisp trigger pull into an excellent shot so a fine kit overall I'm gonna shave down this post again and I'll get this installed and I can show you both blasters complete Alright guys, so this is the final segment on the Orange Modworks Hammer Shot Kit. As always, they're coming out of Apex Weapon System shoulder holsters. I think that, that stuff is awesome. But I want to talk about the kit now. So the kit is honestly not nearly as much of a horror story as I had thought it would be on the front end. All of the pieces dropped in very nicely. There was a serious issue with priming the blasters through. But now that those posts have been shaved down, and you can almost see that through the, the running rail there, they're priming smoothly, firing very, very nicely, and overall I couldn't be more pleased with the kits. I, I think that they're very nice kits. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. They're rotating smoothly and easily and quickly and, and running very nicely. Some of these darts are duds because I pulled them out of the SCNC bin, so that one shot shouldn't be an indicator of the performance. The kit is actually improving the performance significantly, not only because of the spring, but also because the cylinders are machined quite well and the uniform diameter through them, as opposed to the, the nubbin that the stock hammer shot has, these go all the way up through the gray and really is improving how they're chambering darts and firing those darts and how I think that they would fire Stefan darts in addition to having the air restrictor open. So those are the merits of the kit. I'm able to adjust my grip lower with my thumbs so that I can still pull down. I think that that's really, really cool as a feature, especially if you're a person who wasn't liking the hammer shot because you found that priming all the way up here was too much for you. And I can't simulate that with my hands, but if you weren't a big fan of the hammer shot, you should try one of these kits, not necessarily purchase one, but find somebody who's already installed one and, and just see if you like it because it does make a big difference having this completely extra section here to prime through. Now, things I don't like about the kit. Um, I really like dry firing my hammer shots with the air restrictor in and this noise bothers me a whole bunch. I do not think that these kits are going to enjoy being dry fired more than a few times, so definitely don't do that. And I don't like that I can't go crazy cowboy time with them anymore. Things that are also a little bit weird, the trigger is a little bit grippy. It's supposed to be grippy, but I don't see any like notable advantages to this trigger over the stock plastic trigger. And if anything, there's a slight disadvantage in that it sometimes hangs for an extra half a second. That's not a big deal for casual wars, but for like humans versus zombies, if I'm fan firing, I definitely don't want my trigger to catch. Although I guess I'm holding it down, but sometimes what I'm talking about is the stickiness inside the groove is it'll stick to the hammer and it's it's a little bit strange. It's not a big thing, and I may switch back to the orange trickers as I feel like, other than the special plastic and how it feels, these are entirely cosmetic. So that's more or less my review. Let's kind of talk about the last lion or elephant in the room, rather, which is that these kits are very expensive. So how do you know if these kits are worth it for you? They cost roughly as much as three hammer shots. So 
I think that this kit is worth it for you if you are already very much so in love with the hammer shot. If you're the kind of guy who has hammer shot holsters built into your loadout, this is probably a kit that you want to look into and explore because the extra shot is very nice. It ends the strong arm versus hammer shot debate as far as I'm concerned and it's ultimately just a really cool addition and makes your hammer shot very special. So if you're already using a hammer shot and really enjoy the hammer shot, I think this kit is for you. If you're not a big fan of the hammer shot, it's probably not financially savvy for you to spend the equivalent of a rapid strike making a special hammer shot for yourself. So I think that it's a cool kit, but I am biased in that I really, really like the hammer shot. I'm not thrilled with the quality control on it, but if Orange Mod Works products have done anything historically, that has gotten better over time with their quality control. They need this first kind of wave of reviewers like myself to figure out what the bugs are so that they can go back to their manufacturer and a few months down the road, the kits will be absolutely flawless. I do provide a link to their web store in the description box below. I want to be completely above board if you do decide to purchase one of these. It means a lot to me if you purchase it through that link as they give me a small kickback for that service. So as always guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your viewership. I really think that these kits are, are passable. They're not like the most awesome thing ever because they took a little bit of doing to get to work for something that should have been a drop-in kit but once you've got them functional I think that they're very smooth very cool very nice kits and they actually look really really cool if I was gonna paint the owl hammer shots at any point I think that this would be a really cool addition to have all of this black on it that said as always fair warning keep this piece orange at the very least because you do not want an all black or all tactical hammer shot looking blaster especially since it's a pistol in the United States. Nerf on, have fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.